Brighton Beach in New York City, sometimes known as Little Odessa because of the huge Russian-speaking population here. Just to give you a little bit of history of this neighborhood, it was sort of originally kind of developed in the 1860s to be like a beach resort area. Then there was a huge wave of Jewish immigration in about the 1930s, 40s. And then in the 1970s, when the USSR started to relax the travel policies, there was a big wave of immigration from what are now sort of post-Soviet countries, so Russia, Ukraine, Georgia, Uzbekistan as well. And this area still retains uh, a lot of the Russian language as kind of like a common language. You see it on the signs, you hear Russian on the streets. It's really cool for me because I've lived in Russia, Georgia, and Ukraine. So it's really cool to come to this neighborhood in my hometown of New York City and, I don't know, just kind of like relive some of that stuff. And I brought my parents, which is always fun. Brighton Beach is in Brooklyn, right next to Coney Island. And like many of the neighborhoods in Brooklyn, it's just really similar. It's really noisy, lots of people, lots of traffic. But it is really interesting to hear and see Russian everywhere on the streets. Yeah, of course, one of the first things we did was go get something to eat. My parents came to visit me in Ukraine a couple of years ago, so they were a little bit familiar with the dishes on the menu. The nice thing is there's dishes from everywhere in the post-Soviet countries. You've got Georgian food, Ukrainian Veroniki, Russian cutlets. It was a really nice meal, actually. All right, so I see we can go into the bazaar. To me, the amazing thing about this supermarket wasn't that there were like Russian foods or that the product names were in Russian, but that they actually had the products from the different countries. I was shocked to see Kiev cake and Roshan chocolates here, um, and honestly not that expensive considering they had to be imported. They had some pretty interesting prepared foods too, and by that point we actually kind of regretted that we'd already eaten and were too full to buy anything. So my parents did visit me in Ukraine, so they have like a basic understanding of Ukrainian food, but they did not have kvass when they came to visit me. So they're gonna try it now! And I haven't told them anything about it yet. <laughs> well, I, well, I don't, I didn't mean to shake it up. If I did, it was I'm an accident. It looks like chocolate soda. <laughs> 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 it's, a, it's an unusual flavor, but it's not, I mean like... Is it licorice? No. Okay. Wait, wait, I want to What does, it, what does it smell like to you? Licorice. Oh, really? <laughs> coffee yeah. soda. Is it a coffee soda? Oh, if it is, I love it. It's a coffee soda, right? No. What is it? It's no. like bread. Bread? Yeah. It doesn't, doesn't taste yeasty at all to you. Not really. A lot of times teenagers will buy this because it's like a point. 4% alcohol, and they'll try to drink as much as they can <laughs> in order to get a, like a buzz. I wouldn't go to my way to drink it, but it's not bad. They got like a beginner's kvass. I actually like it. You can't have any. <laughs> so the U.S. is finally getting wise to some of these amazing cuisines, and we're seeing a couple of trendy restaurants pop up in D.C. and New York with Ukrainian and Georgian food, but it's nice to come to Brighton Beach and see it as street food. Just get hachapuri from a nice old lady selling it on a table. Uh, oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh. 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 Thank you. Thank you. The last place we went was a store called St. Petersburg, and it's a souvenir and bookshop. So it's got tons of products that you would definitely find in any Ukrainian household, in a Russian house, but also it's got loads of books in Russian and other languages. 
I'm really trying to learn Russian, so I took a look at some of the books I have. The book I picked is actually like pretty decent in terms of language learning, but I did not check the publication date and it was published in 1989, so there are some old cultural references. I probably just should have bought some slippers.